Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello everyone and welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Brie Gabrielle and today is very special because obviously this isn't Captain Rick Murphy, but it's one of my favorite Captain Jim Ross from the Central East region. So happy you're here for our Florida Keys show, Jim. Are you ready to see, oh, hear, I'll and smell you. everything that the Florida Keys has to offer? I am so excited because it's a great show. Lots of action-packed stuff going on down with Rick and the gang. And I'll tell you what, we're going to have a fun time here this week. We are, but first we have to say hi to Dave Farrell, as always at the workbench. Hey, Dave. I'm doing good. How you doing? Pretty good. Are you missing Rick? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm about to cry. <laughs> oh, jeez. I know. It's getting wet uh, up in here. Okay, let's get on with the show, fellas, because Captain McMurphy is down in the Keys at the Postcard and Resort and Marina in Isla Mirada. Hey, Rick, we miss you. <laughs> hey, I miss you too, Bree, and uh, you're absolutely right. We're down here in the beautiful Florida Keys at the Postcard Inn, and as you can tell, there's a lot of beautiful flats around us, and I got to say that when you're looking at these flats, it makes me think about the big bonefish that have been caught here in the Florida Keys. Now right here in this side of, inside of uh, Isla Mirada here, as well as right outside here of the Postcard Inn, there's some of the best bonefish and some of the big bo biggest bonefish that have ever been caught in the Florida Keys. Now also, the other thing that comes to mind is how great the bridge fishing is here throughout, and you're gonna hear some of that from our guys as we go this week. But more importantly, guys, we're gonna get started with the show. My good buddy Randy Tal is here, and Randy, thank you so much for coming. You didn't have very far to drive, but <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the Florida Keys getaway and the four nights here at the Post Guard Inn. Well, it's gonna be pretty special. I mean, you get to come down here and enjoy this. You get to go fishing with me. How bad can that be? Well, it, it's, nothing's bad about coming <laughs> to the beautiful Florida Keys, but Randy, let's go ahead and get started. Bone fishing, something you've been guiding for for over 30 years, as long as I've ever known you. You're certainly no stranger to catching a bonefish, so let's go ahead and get right on into your report. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, when we start talking about bone fishing throughout the Keys, we've got them from Key Largo to Key West. Now, it's really condition driven. And when I say that, what you want to do is you want to have your tides and conditions are going to dictate what you do. If you're in the back, if you're on the ocean side, and these are the things that make all the difference in the world to be successful at catching a bonefish. Now, your bait is not real difficult. It's going to be a shrimp. It's going to be a small blue crab. You're going to look for these fish and you're going to find them might find them tailing on that lower tide. You might find them swimming on the higher tide where they're in deeper water, kicking up some mud, and you want to get it in front of them. They're not going to bite your bait if you throw it behind them. So you really need to have a good pair of eyes, a good pair of glasses, and see these fish as they're swimming along the flats. Now, a lot of these areas have deep channels, and these deep channels are where the bonefish live. <clears throat> and when that tide starts to move, they'll come up out of those channels, and they'll get on the edges of these flats, and that's how you're going to find them. I've got a photo uh, sent to me from uh, Captain Randy Stallings, one of the guides here in Isla Mirada, with a bonefish he caught with Matthew from the UK just a couple days ago. You know, when we talk about permit, we got permit here too. We've got them all throughout the Keys, in the Gulf, and the bonefish and permit right now, they kind of hang out together. A lot of these flats, you're going to find permit just like you would bonefish, so you got to be ready for both of them. And if you, uh, if you want to target the permit specifically, you've got areas like the corally edges around some of these flats, some of the channels that have sargassum weed coming out of it this time of year with the small little fiddler crabs up in the weeds. It's a great way to find a permit. And this happens throughout the Keys. It's not just Key Largo, it's Marathon, it's the Lower Keys, Key West. And it's something that this time of year when it's hot and it's calm, you can take advantage of that. And especially when you've got the right tide, here again, the tide may vary, incoming, outgoing, depending on where you are. I've got a photo from uh, Captain Jared Roscob, one of the young up-and-coming guides around here, very good at permit fishing with Ben Friedman with his permit he caught the other day. Blackfin tuna, offshore right now, been really strong. The overcast, stormy weather we had last week made the bite really good. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you want to troll and you want to catch fish for dinner, a small dark feather trolled way back or a black or a pink worm works really good. But if you really want to target some of the big ones, you're going to want to use live bait like pilchards and go out there and chum to get these fish up on the surface. 
I've got a photo from Captain Brian Cohn with Mark Mitchell with a 30-pounder they caught using live bait on the Alamrata home. Also, Cubera snappers. You know, it's a fish that's really this time of year, July, August, and September, full moon, live lobsters. That's what we use for bait. Some of these deep water wrecks in 200 feet of water are gonna hold these big snappers, and they're a lot of fun. And uh, certainly you gotta be prepared. 65 to 80 pound braid on your rods, and a good leader, 200 to 300 pound leader, is what you're gonna need to stop these things. And I've got a photo of uh, Oz Keggy with a 50 year bucket list fish he caught with me over the weekend. All right, tell me about your hot spots, Randy. You know, the hot spots right now, I'd say bone fishing, look on the rising tide, depending, depending on where you are, and watch for the fish coming up out of the channels. When you see them, get over to them quick to get a good shot. The offshore dolphin fishing still good, 400 to 700 feet of water. Look for birds and debris, and be ready for those big fish swimming by. All right, Randy, thank you so much for being here. We're going to have you back in the show here in another half an hour. But in the meantime, we're going to bring in Andy Newman. Andy. Great to have you down, Rick. Great although, to be although, here in the Florida Keys. I'd still rather have Bree. Come on, Bree. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> now tell us about the tournaments this week. Absolutely, Rick. Um, first of all, uh, we've got um, a number of different tournaments, um, including the Marathon, talk about bonefish, the Marathon International Bonefish Tournament, okay? And that's September 24th to the 27th. It features a number of different divisions, including, Rick, the Wet Pants Champion title. Oh, I, that, could, I could win that. I know, but that's actually for, for anglers waiting from shore, okay? <laughs> Mad Dog Mammoth Fishing Classic, that's here in Ala Mirada. It's set for October 9th and 10th. There's both inshore and offshore divisions. Tournament service is a fundraiser for the Mariner's Hospital Oncology Services. The Robert James Sales Baybone Celebrity Tournament. It's October 9th through the 11th. It's up in Key Largo and targets bonefish and permanent. It's a second of three fall tournaments that raise money for cystic fibrosis treatment and research. And finally, we're keeping with the theme species tonight, the Alamorada Fall All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Championship here in Alamorada, three day tournament and it's set for October 11th to the 14th. Now, Andy, every week we have a special featured tournament, so what do you have for and, us and, this week? And you know something, Rick? I chose this tournament for Kathy, for Bree, and for my wife, Maria, and it's the Ladies Let's Go Fishing University. It's scheduled November 13th to the 16th in Tavernier and Ala Mirada. Let's show you some video as we tell you that this is a great opportunity for ladies to either learn how to fish or improve their angling skills. And what makes the program so special is hands-on fishing activities caught by Florida Keys guides for knot tying, de-hooking, bait rigging, casting, gaffing, cast netting, fish fighting, even trailer backing, boat handling, so much more. Rick, it's billed as the no yelling school of fishing. You don't ever yell at Kathy, right? I've never yelled you at never her. You never yell at her Not at one all. time in my life, you know, just a couple times. I maybe. hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Listen, more, more details, ladiesletsgofishing.com. And of course, Rick, for more details on all the tournaments in the Florida Keys, all the accommodations, hey, it's a great time to travel to the Keys fall. Where do you go, Rick? You go to FLA dash keys or you don't have to have the dash you remember from last year flakeys.com you got it rick i want to ask you something you know you've been talking about tournaments for five years how have, have you ever fished in any of the tournaments and if you have what how'd you do um <clears throat> let's see here the last tournament that i fished on in, in the keys was a marathon dolphin scramble and that was a long time ago all right and i didn't do very well well we have to do something about that i want to we invite should. you we'll do something okay sounds thank great thank you rick. so much you know what Bree, jim I'm so excited about being down here in the Florida Keys. You know, the Keys is epic for its sunsets and looks like tonight is not going to be any different. So anyway, we got a show to do. I'm going to pass it back to you, Bree and Dave and Jim in the studio, and I'll talk to you in a little while. Yes, that sunset looks beautiful. So glad I'm here in the studio with you, though, Jim. Oh, I'm glad <laughs> to be here with you. Although I didn't get an invite from Andy. What's up oh, with that? Oh, he probably just didn't know you were oh, here. It's okay. 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 All right, I'll well, slide. <laughs> thanks, Andy, Randy, and Rick. We're going to take a quick drift up the coast to the southeast region and talk with Captain Jimbo Thomas. Hey, Jimbo. Hey, everybody. How we doing? Pretty good. Well, Randy might argue with me about this, but we have some of the best bone fishing in the world right here in the southeast region. Now, north of government cut bonefish there in the incidental catch, but as you get further to the south, the inside and outside flats from Bear Cut South to Angelfish Creek, those offer some of the most fantastic sight fishing for bonefish you can get. Now, look for these bonefish on the hard bottom and grass flats 
in the one to four foot depth range, and you want to have flats that have some good current flow over them. But best bone fishing generally going to be early in the morning or late in the afternoon before the water gets so hot. Live crabs or shrimp, pink and brown skimmer jigs, and crab pattern flies. Those are our, our standard bonefish baits. Fish them on 8 to 12 pound spinning tackles with 20 pound fluorocarbon leaders or 8 to 9 weight fly tackles. Now our good buddy, Captain Joe Gonzalez, he's been finding schools of small bonefish in the 1 to 3 pound range on the ocean side flats from Soldiers Key south to Caesars Creek. The fish have been mudding in, the, in three to five feet of water, and when they're mudding, they're not typically as spooky. They're pretty easy to get them to bite when they're mudding. They let their guard down. Now, you don't necessarily have to see the fish. You just need to get that bait or lure in the middle of that mud, and most of the time, you're going to get a bite. Now, there's no real shortage of bonefish, but that freeze we had back in 2000, 2010, that took a fairly big hit on the bonefish population. So it's really encouraging to see these schools of smaller fish, which means that the spawning activity in the last few years has been very good. Now I got a photo here. This is Joe Gonzalez Jr. with many of the, one of the many small bonefish that they've caught in the last week. Now staying inshore, the sea trout, they've started showing up in North Biscayne Bay in the past week. Any of the grass flats from Rickenbacker Causeway north to Holliver Inlet, they've been productive with trout in the one to three pound range. The bite is in first thing in the morning before the water heats up, much like all of our shallow water fish. And roughly after about 10 a.m., that bite tends to shut off. Captain Alan Sherman, for Get em Charters, he's been fishing the grass flats on the south side of 79th Street Causeway. And the flats uh, in the, that he's found have been the best have been in three to five feet of water. He's having the most success on flats that are holding schools of small pilchards and glass minnows. So he's been looking for the birds working over the bait, that's where those trout have been. The best baits have been small live pilchards or gulp shrimp fished under a Cajun thunder, and some of the larger fish have been on Rapala skitter walk. Now moving out to the deep water, the dolphin fishing remains anywhere from excellent to awesome, anywhere from eight to, fi eight to 15 miles offshore. Fish are around anything floating, weed lines, sargasm patches, and also under bird activity. There's been lots of schoolies in the 5 to 10 pound range and plenty of larger fish up to 35 pounds coming through. This has been some of the best uh, dolphin fishing that we've seen in quite a while. Now live bait, they always work the best, but they've been really hard to come by. Otherwise, they're being caught on trolled, rigged ballyhoo, small lures and feathers, and that's when the grass isn't too bad. And then when we do find them, we've been casting cut ballyhoo and cut bonita to them. And if you don't have any live or cut bait, soft plastics and bucktail jigs, those will get bites as well. Now since we're already offshore, this is a great time to catch a swordfish. We're a week past the August full moon and this weather's been slick calm, making for comfortable day dropping and night drifting for swordfish. Look for the swords in 1,500 to 2,000 feet of water and in the daytime, you want to drift rig squid, bonita or dolphin strips near the bottom and at night, drift the spread of live blue runners, speedos, and rig squid staggered at various depths from the surface anywhere down, down to about 300 feet. Both, at, both day and nighttime, you want to use two to 300 pound monofilament leaders on 50, minimum of 50 pound tackle with lights attached above those baits. Hey, thanks for that great report from the Southeast Region, Jimbo. I'm going to take your hot spots from here. We've got the First National Bank of South Florida hot spots. Jimbo says, inshore, get on the flats early and cast a live crab or a shrimp to some of those tailing or mudding bonefish. And then offshore, run and gun. Or you can also troll, look for birds or anything floating in 900 to 1500 feet of water. Oh, Jimmy, you're doing so good. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Yay. Okay, coming up on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, Florida Keys Edition, we're checking out some new product swag with Dave and then heading back to the Post Garden and the Florida Keys to smell, I mean, see what's cooking. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Oh, it does, doesn't oh. it? The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. The Florida Lottery, 
Just imagine. Dex and Docks Lumber Company, Florida's dock and seawall supplier, and King Sailfish Mounts. www.kingsailfish.com. There are two cages in this room. The one on your right is made out of high strength steel and the other is made of aluminum. Now I'm gonna release a 700 pound grizzly bear into the room, so you better pick a cage and get in. This is crazy. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Why did you pick the steel cage? Harder for the bear to get in the steel. You wanna see something else made with high strength steel? That's the Chevy Silverado, made with high strength steel for high strength dependability. Beautiful. This is highly irregular. Yamaha's next generation V6 four strokes are changing the game. Mid range power was awesome. Fuel the burn, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I, mean, I couldn't believe the power, it was like a. Just. It was more like doing a quarter mile on a dragster. And them things are like it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the game changer. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. you're back because now it's time for FWC news and notes. September 12th, Vero Beach Boating Course in Vero Beach. September 19th, the Kids Fishing Clinic in Sarasota. And also on September 19th, children in the wild throughout the state of Florida. For more information, visit myfwc.com. But now, Jim, I don't know about you, but I smell something yummy cooking up. I'll tell you what, bonefish mm -hmm. don't taste good, so hopefully they're doing something like some yellowtail snapper or something like that, mm -hmm. something that tastes really good. That would be good, so why don't you, why don't I say, let's talk with Rick down in the Keys. Rick, what you got cooking down there? Thank you so much, Bree. We're here with Chef Dario. You know what, what a beautiful evening we have here in the Florida Keys. And certainly when you got a chef like this doing the cooking, hey, I've got to come and ha visit you at the restaurant. Where do I go to look for you? Uh, my marker 80 at the Ultramar Restaurante. It's an Italian restaurant in uh, the America Resort. Now it looks like you've got a uh, yellowtail snapper on the menu. So what are we going to do with it tonight? Oh, the yellowtail snapper, uh, it's a Florida Keys fantastic fish all the year round. And we're basically going to treat it nice. We're going to take a little bit of salt, a right, little bit of pepper, all right, we're gonna pass it through a little bit of semolina. Now, what is semolina? Semolina is a less glutinous flour, uh -huh. uh, basically a durum flour. Right. That is a little bit more coarse, so it has a little bit less gluten, not so starchy. It just gives it a little bit of crispy taste to it and texture, All right? Now, you got something sauteing in here, Chef. What is that? Oh, that is a little bit of uh, peppers, onions, and garlic. We're gonna deglaze it a little All bit of white thing. one. Yeah. All right. We're gonna get some nices into it. Right. So, so I'm not real familiar with that. What does the white wine do to the taste and why do we use white wine in so many different recipes? White wine, we're adding flavor and depth into it and we're also trying to get all the caramelization out of the bottom of the pot. All right, so nothing goes to waste. All right, all right. so after that? After that, we basically add a little bit of water to it just to cover, uh -huh. all right, everything is underneath. We add some fresh thyme. Looking good. A couple of bay leaves for good luck. Right? And uh -huh. basically, we just let it simmer. When it's ready is when the peppers are nice and tender. Right? And then you can put it in the blender uh, for, I would say, two minutes, and it should come out something like this. Oh, nice so this is that finished, cooled, as well as blended. Oh, yeah, season everything. You always want to add a little bit of love and salt and pepper. 
Oh, you can always add so a little good. bit of hot sauce. You want to substitute the wine for beer, that's fine with me. So let me ask you something, Dario. It looks like you have a V there. That insinuates that you cut out the bloodline. Do you suggest you do that with all the fish? Uh, some fish you might want to. Uh, it, it all depends on the taste. Like tuna, you always want to take it out. Right. Uh, swordfish, um, yellowtail, as long as it's really, really nice and fresh, it's not as, as, as strong and pungent as every other fish. Uh, but you want to clean it as much as you can. It's a nice, clean tasting fish. All right, so because of the beauty of TV, this is our finished product, but what are we serving it over? A little bit of broccoli rob. Broccoli rob is gonna take some of that sweetening of, of that fish because a little bit, it's a little bit bitter and it's gonna balance it out. And then you get a little bit more sweetness out of the pepper uh, sauce. So what kind of wine would you wanna have with this? You wanna stay into a little Chardonnay, a little bit sweeter, kind of light, not go too heavy red like I would because that's just my kind of taste. All right, now if any of our viewers of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report want to come see you, where do they come? At Mile Marker 80 at the America Resort and the Ultramar Restaurant. Thank you so much for being with us here at the Postcard Inn in the beautiful Florida Keys. Bree, I don't know about you, but I'm famished now, so I got some business to take care of, and I'm gonna probably have to beat Randy and Andy off, so you guys go ahead and keep the show going. Yeah, that just looks so horrible down there. Did you see that backdrop? Are you kidding me? And the fish that they're cooking? Oh, I can almost man. smell it. I oh. could smell it, and I'm jealous. Mm. But did you get the recipe, Jim? I didn't, but you know what? You can always go back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report website mm -hmm. and get it, or you can always record the show and get it that way. Oh, he's Two so ways to get smart, it. handsome and smart. <laughs> wow. Okay, remember, guys, if you have bonefish pictures you would like to share with us, we want you to post them on our Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag CFIFR. But on with the show, and Captain Pat Deneen is in the Panhandle region, and he's patiently waiting for his time to shine. What's been biting in the week? <laughs> Wow, it's biting for the weekend, Pat. That fish has got me all jumbly. I'm hungry. I'm Let's hungry eat too. some of that. Bye. Hey, Pat. Hey, Bree, we don't have bone fish, but we do have That's red okay. fish. And, and I talked with uh, Captain Terry McGowan in Panama City, and Captain Terry's been catching some really nice red fish. Fish in the upper bays of Panama City on the shallow grass flats in two to three feet of water. Uh, he's been using, uh, catching 20 to 24 inch fish, using live filters, either free lining them or fishing them under a float. As I mentioned last week, these fish are schooling, so if you get a bite, stop the boat and thoroughly fish that area, and you're very likely to, to you know, catch one or two or several more. And that same pattern holds true for the middle and eastern part of Chattahatchee Bay. Um, in addition, there's been a big influx of red minnows in our bay, Chattahatchee Bay, and these schools of minnows are out in the deeper parts of the bay, and if you're lucky and you're in the right place at the right time, you can get a flip situation where these red fish are pushing the, red, the minnows up to the surface, and it's just a wide open surface bite. It's pretty incredible to see and, and be a part of. Um, also inshore, along all the beaches of the Panhandle, from Port St. Joe to Pensacola, there's been some good black shark fish. And the best fishing is in areas where there's an abundance of laden fish, particularly east of Panama City along Shell Island or west of Pensacola Pass along Perdido Key. And you can sight fish these black tips by either using your trolling motor and easing along down the beach or setting up a good drift the wind's in the right direction. You want to cast a small live laden fish, a butterfly laden fish, or even a strip of, of a laden fish fillet on a wire leader with a circle hook. These black tips are running 15 to 40 plus pounds, so medium to uh, medium heavy spinning rods are the way to go. And it's, it's a great, great spot. It's a great deal because you get to see the bite. They fight hard. They often jump really, really nice, and also they're pretty good eating. Um, moving offshore, the amberjacks remain one of the most dependable offshore bites. As always, structure oriented, and the deeper and the bigger the structure, generally the better the, the, the quality of jacks that they're holding. Uh, inshore of the edge, the wrecks are holding some jacks, but a lot of them are short, so if you step up your bait size, you're going to weed out some of the smaller fish and catch some of the bigger ones. But regardless of where you're fishing, the better baits are going to get the better bites. So spend some time to get the good baits. Um, blue runners, thread fins, large fins, they all work really well. You use a circle hook, a long 50 to 80 pound leader. And then when you're fighting a fish, make sure you keep one or two more baits in the water and you'll often pick up another bite or two. And then finally offshore, uh, Captain Tony Davis of the Anastasia, he reports a good team mackerel bite going on. Last weekend's Harbor Docks team mackerel tournament pretty much uh, verified that before. They weighed in some really good fish up to 50 pounds. Uh, Captain Tony recommends the natural bottom areas of the timber holes and the shallower natural bottom areas of Seagrove Beach. Low troll, a live cigar minnow, or a herring on the surface, and also you can use a downrigger or a trolling lead to get 
some of those troll baits down deep. And you could also use a raffle at 20 or 30 and, and spin natural colors. Uh, the kings are generally 15 to 20 pounds, but you're also likely to catch a bonita dolphin and even possibly a wahoo. Well, thanks a lot there, Pat. I'm going to take your Blue Water Outriggers hot spots from here, but that was a fantastic report from the Panhandle region. Pat says that you guys and gals were looking for those black tip sharks, look for the ladyfish. You're going to want to look along the beaches from Shell Island uh, a little bit to the west. Use jigs and for the ladyfish and then the ladyfish for the sharks and then offshore. Red snapper in state waters this Saturday and Sunday. It's open back up, Bree. Use live cigar minnows or herring and chum them with chunk baits. That will also bring them up to the back of the boat. Woohoo, it's opened up. All yeah. right, coming up, we are checking in with the southwest and central east regions. Plus, we are talking about fall fishing in the Florida Keys right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Bud and Mary's Marina, there you go. Gotta love it. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Drummond Community Bank. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Need new wiper blades? <laughs> Drive safe. Get Trico windshield wiper blades at Bennett Auto Supply. You want the protection, performance, and peace of mind only Trico can deliver. Bennett Auto Supply. Do it yourself, but not alone. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joinccaflorida.com right now. What do you think? When I first sit in the seat, it makes me think of a BMW. I feel like I'm in a Lexus. You would think that this was a brand new Audi. It's like a luxury car. It feels kind of like an infinity. Very similar to Range Rover. This is pretty high tech. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of the Mercedes. This is Chevy? Wow. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for Chevy. They thought about me. I could totally rock this. This thing feels pretty boss. It looks kind of dope. That's pretty cool. This is the jam. Pretty bomb, dude. Maybe I will go Chevy. <laughs> So, Randy, we're here in the beautiful Florida Keys. What a setting at the Postcard Inn. We've got the beautiful flats of the Florida Keys behind us. But, you know, a lot of times in the fall months is a great time to be down here fishing. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Hey, fish fans, you know what? This time of year, it, it's from now through Thanksgiving, you can have some great fishing here throughout the Florida Keys, depending on what you want to go catch. A lot of the um, offshore fishing right now with the dolphin, it's a real popular fish. A lot of people come down here to specifically target those, and they're excellent in the summer months. The crowds are down, accommodations are a lot easier to get. It's my favorite time of year to fish. We also have plenty of diving starting in uh, August with the lobster season, and a lot of people like to come down and enjoy the combination diving and fishing makes for a lot of fun. It's a great way to beat the heat when you can do a little diving in the morning or the afternoon after a good morning of fishing. Now, talking about the reef fishing this time of year throughout the summer months, you got yellowtails, mangrove snappers. They're excellent right now in these months. And also, you can fish for them day or night, depending on what you like to do. Now, the big mangrove snappers, they like to spawn this time of year on the moons at night. So a lot of people go to the edge of the reef for that mangrove snapper fishing. As we move off into the backcountry around the Flamingo area, some of the best red fishing can be done this time of year. 
Now, if you've got a polling skiff, you can get up on top of the flats in the shallow water. You can look for big schools of redfish on top of the flats. If you don't, you're going to look on the edges and the shorelines, and you'll find plenty of redfish. You're going to use shrimps and pinfish on a hookup to get that done. Now, the snook fishing, it's a great time to do that. Snook season's closed, but it's going to open September 1st. But that just means you've got plenty of snook to catch in the meantime, catch and release, and uh, September 1st, you'll be able to keep one for dinner. That's what you like to do. You know, throughout the, the Keys, there's no better experience than to go have a great day of fishing, come back in, and bring your fish that you caught to the local restaurants and have them cook it up for lunch or dinner. Makes for a great day, and it's a great way to spend your uh, vacation in the Florida Keys. Hey, great information. I appreciate everything. But you know what? More importantly, we've been talking about a Florida Keys getaway. Four nights at the Postcard Inn and here in Isla Mirada. But more importantly, we also have a day of fishing with you, Captain Randy Tao. We appreciate your generosity. And I think it's time for us to give that away. What do you think? Great. Sounds good to me. All right. So we do know that the winner is... Anastasia Norman from Port St. Lucie. Anastasia, congratulations. You're gonna be here in the Florida Keys with Captain Randy Tao. We're very excited for you. Man, I wish I was gonna be able to go fishing with you guys, but, and maybe I will be able to if she invites us, you know? <laughs> but anyway, it's time to get back to more reports. And Bree, it's time for you and Jim to get busy. Back in the studio. Congratulations, Anastasia. That's going to be fun. I've fished with Randy. He's a great guy. You're going to catch lots of fish and have lots of fun, right? Full of knowledge. Absolutely full, full of knowledge. Full of knowledge. Yeah. Okay, next up we have the Southwest region with Captain Ronnie Houston, who's got all the Labor Day weekend report you could want. Let's hear it, Ronnie. Well, you know, obviously bone fish isn't common in the region, but with the Labor Day weekend coming up, you know, we just got into snook season and opening up on September 1st. And with the opening of snook season, reports have really been impressive to the south. Early morning outgoing tide on the outer Gulf points, generally in the area right now from Camp Lulu to Jewel Key, using walk the dog type lures in chrome, bone, and chartreuse, as well as plentiful schools of finger mullet. But a little further to the north, almost all most spillways and culvert runoffs in the Cape Coral area up to Punta Gorda, and nighttime fishing from Punta Rossa boat ramp up to the Caloosahatchee to the 41 Bridge, concentrating right now on residential canal entrances and seawalls off the river. Now, be it, you want to concentrate on the late afternoon incoming until about midnight. Lip plugs four to six inch in white, chartreuse, clown, red and white and olive colors have been working. Also a variety of weighted swim baits, four to six inches have been working. On the swim baits, the bigger the paddle tail, the better, but with both plugs and swim baits, they can be captured with a steady retrieve or slow trolled, just enough for the tip of your rod to wild wobble. Plenty of snook right now in this spot, but I also have a picture of Captain Josh Greer fishing one of the residential canal mouths with a nice snook, and he caught that on an eight-weight fly rod. Also, on the inshore side, the redfish. Now, with the tides we're having, concentrate on fishing the early morning outgoing in the smokehouse area. Buzzard Bay area and from the Mount Lachey Bridge to the power line on both sides of the intercoastal. Now most of the day the tide is going out, so the first couple hours of the day has really been important. The bite has been best. First couple hours using gold spoons, top water plugs with the four inch fast assassin, soft plastic paddle tails and white, mud bugs, houdini and golden brim. Also as the tide starts getting to the low and the heat of the day comes in, want to concentrate on using cut bait or live pin fish or cut lady fish. Now, on the offshore side, the permit. You want to concentrate from Stump Pass to Sanibel, fishing most noted structure 8 to 17 miles out. And obviously, this is a run and gun bite. Once you get into these marked areas, anchor up or drift looking for fish on top or watching your bottom finder while drifting bait out the back of the boat, anywhere up to a quarter mile away from the structure. Or you can anchor up and use free line. you can free line your baits with the current. You can also fan cast bucktails three to four inch. You can also use three to four inch weighted swim baits. Darker, darker the color the better. But I'm going to tell you right now, best bet is to stock up or get to the, get to the taco shops early. Live crabs are going to be your best bet to catch these permit. Some of these fish right now are up to 35 pounds. Also on the offshore side, cobias. 
concentrate a little further to the south from Indian Key to Gordon's Pass. Here we go again, fishing most noted structure, but we're 12 to 20 miles out. Here again, this is also run and gun bite, patterned by drifting across, looking for the fish, looking for rays or turtles on top of the water, or anchor up and chumming live filters to draw the fish up, or stop by the taco shop and get some chum blocks, chumming out to attract the fish. Once you get them to the top, large live baits like pinfish, front, red fins, artificial ears, or large bright colored chugging lures will work. Right now with the weather we're having, perfect time to get out there on the offshore side for the permits and the cobias. Hey, thanks, Ronnie. Great report. Hopefully you guys and gals will get a chance to get out there and take advantage of that this weekend. I'm going to take a look at your hot spots from the southwest region brought to you by Florida Outdoor Experience. Captain Ronnie says, inshore, trout, lumber key to bird key, late afternoon incoming seems to be the best. Check the grass flats with potholes in them using soft plastics with noise making corks, rattling corks or chugging corks. And then offshore, King Mackerel, Redfish Pass to Gordon's Pass, you want to fish the wrecks in 45 to 60 feet of water. And you want to use large, look for large schools of bait. Use silver spoons, large lip diving plugs, or live herring or blue runners, and you should be able to get a pretty good bite going on for yourself on this King's Offshore. Okay, well, seeing as we have our very own Central East Region Captain Jim Ross in the studio tonight, he needs no introduction except maybe a high five. There you go. Take there it away, go. Jim. Hey, you know what? We don't have a whole lot of bonefish in my region. Yeah. You can get them a little bit into Sebastian area mm -hmm. in those little feeder creeks and things like that. And also the guys and gals that are fishing along the beaches will catch them on some cut shrimp once in a while. But really we have redfish in my region. And, and the redfish, uh, it, it, actually, let me start with snook because the snook is the first thing that I really want to talk about. They're in that inlet as well at Sebastian. And right now we've just opened the season up and they are really starting to school and they're good. And so right now what you want to do is get out there and look for the fish on the outgoing tide. And you want to try to throw something like a live proker, a live pinfish, something to that nature in the daytime times. And then when you get there at night, you want to throw the rapala plugs or storm swim baits, especially some of those bigger fort size 14s uh, and some of those deep running baits because you're going to get some of those snook whenever you're fishing inside that inlet. The best thing about our snook right now, guys and gals, is that they're running from about 26 to 34 inches. And you know that makes you guys and gals as happy as it makes me whenever you can get a shot at some good slot size fish. Now, we don't have a whole lot of bonefish in my region and we don't have a whole lot of these fish either. I've got a picture here of the craziest thing that I think that I've seen caught on rod and reel this year. Bill Pastermack got a flying fish while he was out fishing offshore recently. And this is just one of those things that it's hard to believe that you actually caught it on a hook and line. I'm not exactly sure how he did it, but he did it. And it's about the same with the bonefish. Switching over to the redfish, because that's what we really consist, uh, that's our most consistent bite throughout the region this week. It's been a little unpredictable, just like the weather pattern's been, but I'll tell you guys and gals what, the slot size reds are feeding on the shallows on most mornings, and if it's calm, you're gonna be able to see them tailing pretty aggressively with this full moon that we've just had go by us. Much of the tailing activity stops by about 8.30 or 9, so you wanna get out there early if you can. And anglers that are using the saltwater assassin four inch shrimp rigged on one of those weedless assassin hooks seem to be doing really well. Now, Drunk Monkey and Mudbug are the two best colors over the past two weeks. Now, once they stop chasing those, you want to switch over to some cut pinfish or some cut mullet. Throw that on a VMC circle hook and, you know, the reds are going to start uh, picking that up through the mid-morning and midday time periods. Most of the fish right now are running from about 18 to about 30 inches, but I'll tell you, it, you know, you can always get a few of those fish that are pushing that 40 inch mark. Now, we're going to take a look at the Navionics for my region, and if you look at the Navionics, this area right here is the Mosquito Lagoon. This is the Hallover Canal coming out on the east side, and if you'll look, you've got a bunch of these contour lines right in around the, the very base of the reliefs right there where you've got those rock jetties and things coming out. But this ridge right here is the very first ridge you come to. This ridge right here is the false channel coming down. And then this ridge going up into here is going up into Twin Palms and Pardon Slough. The fish are sitting on top of these flats in the daytime and then they're dropping into these edges and down into these deeper areas and especially right in here in the middle of the daytime. So you guys and gals can get out there and you can catch fish early or late depending on what time you get on the water. Just put, put yourself in the right position, either up on the shallows in the morning or down in the deep whenever you get a little more sun up in the sky and you're going to be able to
to catch those fish. We've got king mackerel offshore right now. Captain John Zeller uh, up in the New Smyrna area, Port uh, Ponce Inlet area, says that you guys and gals, if you really want to catch some fish, get out there to the 70 to 90 foot reefs uh, outside of that inlet right now. The party grounds are doing really good. The East 11 is doing really good right now. Um, you know, any of those 70 to 90 foot structures are going to be where you want to be. Now, Captain John also said that what you want to do is you want to pull strip baits. Bonita strips and mullet strips are working really well right now on a planer rig, or you can put them on a wireline rod. Not a lot of guys use a wireline anymore. Some guys are actually switching over to the braided lines with a trolling sinker, but the wireline still catches a lot of fish. It's kind of an old school technique, but it's a deadly technique. Now, if you want to catch some dolphin, wahoo, and sailfish, go to the 90 foot depths and start there and then work your way out to about 160 feet. Most of the king mackerel right now are running about 12 to 18 pounds, but some larger fish into the 30 pound range are also possible. And then the other species that we have along our beaches and offshore right now is the tarpon. Now, Captain Joe Smith of Fin Factor Charters has been fishing outside of Port Canaveral this week, and he's had some really, really good catches, uh, especially following those bait pods that we've been having coming up and down the beach. He's been doing a combination of things. He's trolling with some live baits, some mullets, and some pogies, and he's getting strikes that way, but he's also having his customers cast Rapala subwalk lures, and whenever you get those aggressively feeding fish on those pods, that's when those lures seem to work the best. Right now, a, a combination of the two is the best way to go at it. Don't cast your arm off all day long. Wait till you see them feeding aggressively, then get the artificials out there. Right now, you're going to look for the morning bite to be a pretty good bite, and then late in the afternoon seems to be a good bite as well. Our average tarpon is running about 75 to 120 pounds, and you know what? You can get fish up into the 150 pound mark if you want to. All right, well, what do you say we take a look at your hookup hotspots. Let's go to the hookup hotspots. <laughs> My hookup hotspots for this week. Inshore, we are looking at the um, speckled trout and you're going to look for them between Sebastian and Miko right now and if you use a live finger mullet near the spoil islands the man or the mangrove covered shorelines you're going to get some pretty good fish and some nice fish up into that mid 20 25 inch range and then offshore king mackerel on the reefs to 70 to 90 foot reefs are working the best and you want to use strip baits on that planer or wireline rod like what I was talking about a little while wow, ago. Wow you are talking and I'm so <laughs> impressed I'm going to let you take a break. Coming up on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report Florida Keys style we're headed to the northwest region and then look at at some spanking new products with Dave Farrow. What you got for us, Dave? We're throwing down the gauntlet. Oh my We're goodness. We're throwing them down. Oh my goodness. All right, well, stick around for some more fun in the sun only on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. <laughs> the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hook up lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen, Navionics, we start where the road ends, Maverick Boat Company, celebrating 30 years of leadership in innovation, conservation, and stability, and First National Bank, your first choice for better banking. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology inspired inline four cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA. They prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger and smarter, boating gets even better. And more satisfying for boaters like you. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. All fishermen are created equal. Some just use better fishing line. For over 30 years, Guy Harvey has been a true hero to marine life and conservation. 
And now he's sharing his inspiration with an exclusive image for the Guy Harvey Heroes scratch-off game from the Florida Lottery. Win up to $50,000, incredible sport fishing trips, and the opportunity to fish with Guy Harvey himself. Celebrate your everyday heroes and the freedom to play with the Guy Harvey Heroes scratch-off game today. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Hey, you know what? We're back and we're at the CCA workbench this week and we've got a whole bunch of new products, Dave. Product showcase. The only thing I have to do this week, it's awesome. You got a break this week, <laughs> didn't you? Yes, I did. Taking it easy. Yep. First thing we're going to talk about are these Williamson Wireman gloves there. <clears throat> you know, when you, whenever you're going to get a fish up close to the boat, you have to have a good pair of gloves. And we had some sun gloves on from AFCO last week and, or a couple weeks ago and now we've got these Williamson gloves are made for holding a little heavier fish, you know. Uh, they got a nice uh, nylon uh, insert in the back that keeps them stiff, you know, keeps heavy leaders when you're, you know, when in you're, the right spot. When you're wrapping that fish, mm -hmm, that'd and you be the get wrong it across, way. yeah, come, come the other way. <laughs> when you're, when you're, and, and you're coming across your hand, that'll right. keep you from getting cut back there as right. well. Not only that, it keeps you from crushing, you know, you don't want it to crush. But these gloves also, they have a nice leather part on the, in the, in the, in the middle here mm -hmm. and on the thumb, so that allows you to get a good grip. Well, and, and the dexterity you get because you don't have an extra covering over the tips of the fingers. Correct, correct. And there, what, another good thing about these gloves is they're not so thick that is, they won't hurt you a little. You know, you don't want to have a pair of real heavy wiring gloves that don't hurt at all because if you break the leader when the fish is jumping away, you didn't, you know, you've lost you, the fish. You haven't you've tagged lost, it. Yeah. You haven't put a gaff in it. You know, and it works that way with all fish. So if it doesn't hurt a little bit to make you let go, you know, you're not going to let go, <laughs> and you're going to break him off, you and that's not a good off. thing. We want him to let go. So yes, those are do. some nice Williamson gloves there. Also, here we have this new Taylor offshore trolling kit, and what's really cool about these things, here's the the big one you want to hold right here, is a, uh, it's got this cam locking system on it, so it allows you to change out these uh, your hook set. You know, you got your, your head here, and you pull that thing back. It's kind of like a, uh, a, a lock on an on a air Oh, on gotcha. Air lock. gotcha. You know what? If I was right-handed, I could probably do it easier. Yeah, you might have to pull gotcha. it Gotcha. And, oh, and it's got little tabs that you line up. Correct. Okay. So it comes apart just like that, but Correct. you can twist it and mm -hmm. then make it not. Correct. Gotcha. And, and it, you know, it comes with all these different, you can get all different uh, yeah. ones. This is, this is called the Taylor Offshore Trolling Kit, and it comes with four or five of these uh, E1s and M1s, so you can put them all together and, and change out. You get your baits in the water faster, and that's the whole idea. Boy, but, you, you know, sure can. You, you can rig up a whole bunch of these baits and have them sitting, and when you go to change out your leader, bang, 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 you just put that little clip together, and boom, you're ready to go. Pretty neat little stuff. There. Now, this this next thing is you, you brought along, which I thought was really cool, and these are these little uh, glass minnow imitators. Oh, man. They're not grass minnow imitators. They're actually their little crappie dapper from Bass Assassin. Yeah. But these things look just like a little tiny uh, glass minnow. And I know that uh, right now there's a lot of little baby fish in the water and a lot of the fish are targeting those little baby fish. And if you throw something big in there after them, they're not going to start chasing it. They're, they're very size specific a lot of times. And when they're chasing those little tiny things, you throw a big chug bug or something in there, they're not going to want to eat it. They won't eat that little thing. And it's amazing how big fish will do that. Big tarpon, giant fish, doesn't care. Um, the, the, I've been using these for the tarpon in the river a lot because they've been feeding on small glass minnows. But trout, redfish, everything, including speckled perch, the crappy, mm -hmm. uh, eat them. And you were saying you want to take them to freshwater, try and use them in your bass pond. Oh, yeah, because I've got, you know, if you look on a lot of the bakes, uh, lakes in central Florida right now, they've got all those fry that are up on the surface. At, at, right at dark, yeah. and there are tons of them up on the surface, and the bass are just in there, just tearing them to pieces. And nothing I throw out there, unless it's about that same size, gets bit. You need to have something nice yeah. and small. Everything you're throwing is probably twice or three times the size of what they're exactly. feeding on. And they don't want none of that. They don't want it. They yeah. don't want it. What else have we got? Well, this is a really cool. This is a cool uh, Huck Performance Proficient shirt. Uh, Huck, they just came out with this new fishing stuff recently. What's really cool about this shirt, it's made out of two different kinds of fabrics. It's kind of really hard to tell, but here on the back you can tell a lot easier. It's got a mesh on the bottom and along the back sides of the arms, and on the top it's got a real high-tech performance, you know, microbiobial, microbiobial, whatever the heck they call it. Microbial. Keeps, microbial, exactly. Yeah. Keeps stuff from stinking on you. It wicks the water off you. It doesn't get stained. Uh, so sun protection on top, venting underneath. Yep, yep. And very good for stains as well. The Huck 
hook fishing performance. And then we've got some new suffix lines. Well, this is our last one. You know, we've got the new new suffix 8, 832 came out last year with a bunch of new new stuff, the 10s and the 20. A lot of the guys were saying, hey man, we want something in between. So they came out with the 15 pound. And that's got something they call a five pound mono diameter, which is, you know, you imagine a five five pound monofilament would have to be pretty tiny. Somewhere between four and six pounds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. It'd have to be tiny. And that stuff's tiny. And if it's breaking at 15 pounds, you know, it, for, for as small as it is, I bet you a dollar it breaks more than that. And it's very supple, cast like a dream, as, as all that suffix 832 and braid that, does. And that gore fiber reduces the amount of noise and reduce, it, it increases the, uh, the the slickness of the line so it passes through your guides and casts a little better. Right. Dave O'Mayo, great job. All, all kinds of great new products. We're yeah. going to look forward to coming back here next week and doing it again. But yes, until sir. then, enjoy the break. I'm going to. Bree, what have we got next? Well, Jim, I'm so glad you asked. Well, we are headed up to the northwest region to check in with Hagalicious. Hag, what you got for us? I don't have many bonefish, but I got plenty of snook. <laughs> We've got snook right now. Uh, Captain Mike Manning out of Carpenter Springs reports a really good snook bite right now. He's fishing around rock uh, docks, passes, um, rock jetties, as you get in the northern part of my region. They're really popular for them. Uh, pinfish, pigfish either free line or a one ounce or a half ounce lead just about a foot above the hook and you want to drift those on the outgoing tide. Also first thing in the morning you can throw skitter walks. Um, Lots that color has been working really well and off in Crystal River for snook right now and also down in my region and producing some good fish up to 40 inches. Also the trout bite in the upper half of my region is going strong. You want to look for fish in four to six feet of water over the grass flats on that broken bottom I talked about. That's where the sand and the grass meet, those little pockets where the fish are going to be starting. First thing in the morning, you want to start with that skitter rock and that moss fat color. That's been a really good color first thing in the morning. And as that sun gets up, you want to switch over to uh, a jig with either a nuclear chicken or chicken on a chain. Those two colors and the a lot of the rain we've been having, it's a little bit dirtier, have been working really well. And those are in the turbo shad from Bass Assassin. Or a pinfish under a Cajun Thunder also works really well. That Cajun Thunder right now was as dirty as the water is. To give it a couple pops or even use it with your artificial, those trout can find your bait a whole lot easier right now with that dirty water. Go ahead and moving offshore, the gag grouper bite throughout my region has been pretty good and, and that 80 to 120 foot seems to be the magic magic numbers right now if you want to look for those fish in that area. Rock piles, ledges, uh, pinfish, cut sardines on a standard bottom rig, heavy gears and must right now. There's some big gags out there and you don't want to get rocked up. So reports this week and a couple of fish I've seen in the 25 pound range so there's some nice size gag grouper out there and also off towards the red grouper bite in the southern part of my region has been seen to be on fire everywhere out there the south part of that region you want to look for the fish anywhere from 40 to 80 feet of water over that flat rock with cheese bottom and when you move up to the north you want to get out a little bit deeper in that 60 to 90 feet and that same flat rock with cheese bottom and both of them you want to use squid or cut sardines on a standard bottom rig. Hey Jeff, real quick, uh, how is the scallopin doing with all of that water you've had? Um, it's made it a little dirty and they're a little harder to see, but the guys are still catching them. Um, you want to wait for that lower tide and that going tide. It seems to clean up a little better and you still can catch uh, pretty good mess of scallops up there. But it's a little bit dirtier with all the rain we've had in that storm we just had. Well, at least you're still able to get out and get them. Well, thanks for that report. I'm going to take your uh, Drummond Community Bank hotspots from here for the Northwest region. Captain Jeff says snook on the beaches and passes. Use pinfish and grunts as bait if you're fishing inshore. And then offshore, mangrove snapper can be found on the high relief structure in 25 feet of water and out. Yeah, when I went out with Jeff, it was a little murky, but we were still able to get a good 30. That's good. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was fun. <laughs> I heard people come back with buckets and buckets. This is my first time. It was you know, it, do, it all depends on where you stop. If you stop and you don't see them, move. Just, move on. just keep moving. Yeah. That's, that's the secret I to did that bait. Dive down and like literally do this to the grass, but yeah. it was fun. It was yeah. a blast. Well, Jim, what do you say we head back down to the Florida Keys and check in with Captain Rick Murphy? Hey, Rick. Hey, Bree, it's so good to be here in the Florida Keys. And I'm telling you, with an outgoing tide, I thought I saw some bonefish tailing right here behind me. The water's getting low enough. I'll be looking for them here in a minute. But more importantly, we got Dick Haygood with us. And Dick, tell us about some of the art that we've experienced here in the beautiful Florida Keys. Well, we've been fortunate enough over the years here in Isla Mirada recently to uh, 
acquire a, a much broader creative community. And uh, the result is the art you see behind you and around you here, uh, depictions, if you will, of uh, experiences we've had on the water through the years. It's like a photograph. It, it lasts forever. It, uh, something you can hang in your house, put on a put on a pedestal and live with it and be proud of it. There's been a lot of great artists that have come out of the Florida Keys or even live in the Florida Keys. We have Millard Wells, we have David Worth, Tim Borski. I mean, what else am I forgetting, Dick? Pasta Pantaleo, who I think is one of our, uh, one of our best artists here in the Keys and co-founder of our Arts and Culture District in Isla Mirada. Uh, and there are others, I, I hate to leave anybody out, there's so many good ones. Uh, but I think art's been developing here. The awareness of art and the awareness of the importance in, in, our, in our heritage and in our culture here in Isla Mirada has just uh, has grown over the years. Now in the Florida Keys, you guys have an event every month that's called Art Walk. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, in Mirada Arts and Culture District, we uh, host what we call the Third Thursday Art Walk. Obviously, every third Thursday of the, of the year, uh, 12 times a, a, a year. Uh, great event, uh, lots of music, lots of art, uh, lots of food, uh, kids drawing chalk on the sidewalk. It's a, it's a great family event. We have upwards of uh, 2,000 people uh, a month at our event, so, so it's one of the better events down here. So what time of the afternoon or day does that occur? It goes 6 to 9 uh, in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously this time of year it's a little warm, so people tend to get there a little bit late. When we get into season, uh, January and February, and we have our uh, snowbirds coming in, plus our visitors at the, at the hotels, our crowds swell and it becomes a real festival. So is it, is it driven by the arts itself or, you know, what do I expect to see there besides, you know, just all the arts? You know, it's arts centered, uh, but we view it as a community night. We view it as the opportunity for our citizens to come out see each other. We're a long linear community as you probably know and it's difficult to get together. It's a good, good place to bring your family. We have a microbrewery there. Drop your kids off, let them draw on the Where's it sidewalk. Located? It's located uh, at Mount, mile marker 81 in Isla Mirada on and what's called um, Mirada Way. Dick, you have been a plethora of information. Thanks, That's Rick. a big word for me. But more importantly, we've got to get back to the studio. Got a few more reports to do before it gets dark. Thank you so much for being here. And Bree, take yep. it away. Jake, we're laughing at your big word there. Plethora, I'm proud of you. Multi-syllables. Look what he's learning down there I'll in the Keys. <laughs> they learned him down there. All right, well, I hope you all have been enjoying the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report Keys Edition. But wait, there's more. Up next, we're talking to the East and Northeast region, so stay tuned, and we'll bring you back to paradise in the Florida Keys shortly. Look at that sunset. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. CCA Florida. The voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing. Your fish hunt paddle store. Guy Harvey. Marine wildlife artist and conservationist and Sea Sucker Vacuum Mounting Systems. Serious fishermen demand quality equipment on their boats and on shore. That's why Florida boaters have trusted decks and docks for over 20 years for dock lumber, hardware, and accessories. Tough products that stand up to the roughest environments and elegance to please the most discerning homeowner tastes. Decks and Docks. Supplying waterfront customers with lumber, decking, and seawall. With 10 locations across Florida. There are two cages in this room. The one on your right is made out of high strength steel and the other is made of aluminum. Now I'm gonna release a 700 pound grizzly bear so pick a cage and get in it. Glad I picked this cage. Why did you pick the steel cage? That's a big animal right there. <laughs> you want to see something else made with high strength steel? That's the Chevy Silverado, made with high strength steel for high strength dependability. It's beautiful. Look at the size of his head.
We're here at PowerPole's headquarters, and today's PowerPole tip of the week is certainly about the great finishes that you get on all your power poles. Now let's talk a little bit about the components. Now the components consist of great bushings that are built into each and every power pole. It comes with stainless and brass hardware, a two to five year warranty depending on the model that you buy. Now the spike has a lifetime unconditional warranty. So even if you make a mistake and you drag it down the road by accident, PowerPole will replace it for you. Now when it comes to the tech support, you have the Sea Monster app that you can use to diagnose your problem or you can actually go on their website and look at one of 1500 dealers and find out how they can help you as well. But the other thing you can do is you can certainly call PowerPole and talk to a technician anytime that you want. That's today's PowerPole tip of the week. It's about the great service that you get with PowerPole. Okay, from the decks and docks east region is Captain Mike Holliday with a fantastic weekend report. Hey, Mike. Hey, Bree. How are you? Pretty darn good. Well, I'd like to talk about bonefish, but they're kind of an incidental catch, so I'd rather talk about something you can really target and catch with consistency. And uh, snook season opened Tuesday, and there's some great catches the first couple of days. So let's talk about snook. There are a lot of fish in all the inlets and on the beaches on both sides of the inlet, as well as on the A1A Bridge and Coast Guard Station in Jupiter, and the North and South Bridges in Fort Pierce. Most of the fish are still in the surf, so places like the Lake Worth and Juno Piers are producing fish on, on live bait, uh, and there's still a good concentration of small fish on the beach at Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge. Live pilchers, threadfins, croakers, sardines, and mullet are still the top baits, either free-lined or fishing on the bottom with a weight. And with a fall mullet run kicking in and mullet going down the beaches and into the inlet, if you're gonna throw lures, you might as well go with something that looks like a six to eight inch mullet. So, uh, you know, a dye dapper, uh, rigged weedless, uh, and the mullet colors is a good option. A mag minnow is a good option, a top water plug. A lot of the snook being caught right now are over the 28 to 32 inch slot. So make sure you bring something with you to measure your catch and make sure you pinch the tail on the fish. The other bite we got going, tarpon fishing right now is as simple as finding the mullet because that's what the fish are keying in on. You can run the beaches looking for fish blowing up mullet. You can fish the inlet at dawn and dusk and after dark when the mullet are pouring through, or you can fish the bridges after dark. Smaller fish uh, are in both forks of the St. Lucie River and they're rolling at dawn as well as up around the Moorings Channel and uh, Big Mud Creek. You'll also find some huge fish feeding on mullet on the, on the beach side up in the Vero Cove. For baits, it's pretty hard to beat a six to 10 inch live mullet uh, with 50 to 60 pound fluorocarbon leader and a 4.0 to 7.0 circle hook, depending on the size of the fish you're targeting. And uh, you know, the fish around the inlets and the bridges at night, they're blowing up the mullet, so you can throw top water plugs or you can throw a, you know, a saltwater assassin elite shiner. Um, and the rolling fish in the rivers, you can sight cast them with a, uh, a four inch Houdini colored sea shad, throw to them, and when they roll, let it sink to a count of three and then just reel it back very slowly with no action. You feel that little tap set the hook. Average tarpon in the rivers is 10 to 50 pounds. The fish in the inlets and on the beaches are in that 40 to 120 pound range. So a lot of tarpon, a lot of snook going right now. Mike, what have you got going for us offshore? Well, Tropical Storm Erica didn't bring much in the way of wind and rain, but it did whack the island south of us, and that'll put a lot of floating debris into the Gulf Stream. And as that debris gets pushed up through the area with the currents, look for dolphin and wahoo to feed off it. Now, you know, this has been one of the most consistent summers for dolphin in years, and there's still plenty of fish out there, starting in like 70 feet of water off Martin and St. Lucie counties, and deeper off Palm Beach County, working your way out to a thousand feet of water or more. And with the forecast for calm seas through the weekend, this is a time to get out there and run and gun. Uh, you know, get out the binoculars, run for a while, shut down, look through the binoculars in all directions until you see something floating or you see a good patch of weeds. When you come across something that looks good, either pitch out live baits or troll around it, but don't spend more than 15 minutes on anything if you don't get a bite. Pick up and run and gun again. Average dolphins been five to 15 pounds with fish to, fish to 25 pounds out deep. And I got a photo there, uh, Christine Gibley, she was fishing with her husband, Leo. They were fishing out of Jupiter Inlet and they caught a, a bunch of dolphin that day. That nice dolphin came in 750 feet of water and they caught them throwing top water plugs once they located the fish. Well, that's pretty cool. And you've got some wahoo out there as well, Mike? 
Yeah, there's a lot of boats uh, that were targeting Wahoo off Palm Beach County on last week's full moon, and a good portion of them really weren't even in the game. You know, if you're going to fish for Wahoo, you have to get your bait down. Even five to ten feet down is going to make a big difference. Uh, the guys that are high speed trolling, they're trolling early in the day and late in the day. The guys that are that are doing good in the midday are live baiting or they're trolling with larger baits when that sun's up high. The Wahoo fishing should remain decent for the next couple of weeks, particularly as that debris from the storm over the weekend drifts through and brings more fish in from the other side of the Gulf Stream. For bait, uh, you know, if you're going to live bait, a live blue runner, a goggle eye, a bullet bonita, that'll get you plenty of bites. Uh, a double hook, ballyhoo with a red and black or pink and purple Islander lure in front of it. That'll do really well if you're trolling. Uh, Yozuri Bonitas uh, are going to do well if you're going to high speed troll. Black Bart are another good option. Average Wahoo is 20 to 40 pounds. And I got a photo. We'll go a little above average here. That's Captain Eric Gates of Jupiter. He caught that 70 pound Wahoo. He was high speed trolling. He was pulling a Yozuri Bonita lure when, when uh, that fish ate. He was fishing alone in 450 feet of water. Wow, that's a monster, Mike. I tell you what, I hear the bass report is pretty good if you're fishing at the Chobe. Have you guys had a chance to talk with anybody that's been out there fishing? I did. I, you know, I talked to Captain Mike Shellen of Okeechobee. He's been telling me that the early morning bite has been outstanding, particularly around King's Bar and around Tin House Cove there up on the north end of the lake. The fish are way back in the Kissimmee grass. So you can throw like a, a War Eagle half ounce uh, spinner bait, either white or blue and white. The key is throw it out there. The second it hits the water, start working it so it won't snag in the grass. Work it on the surface and you'll get those great explosive strikes. If you're really into that, you can also throw a Bass Assassin Elite Shiner, rig it weedless uh, in the shad colors, and just throw it way back in there and reel it out uh, nice and slow across the surface and, and you'll get the blow up. And also, a lot of bites uh, are coming from school fish that are still chasing shad along the grass lines. So topwater plugs at dawn, uh, a black and blue or green pumpkin colored worms will work really well on those fish. Be on the water at dawn, off the water by 10 or 11, you'll have 20 to 40 fish. More if you use live shiners. Okeechobee is still hot, 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 just like the weather, guys. <laughs> you got to like that. Thanks for that report, Mike. Yeah, I hear the bass fishing has been just absolutely on fire out there. Hey, you know what? We're going to go to the East Region hot spots. Captain Mike says snook and tarpon are on the beaches from Tiger Shores Beach to the Sand Pebble Condominiums. And you want to use some swimming plugs or white saltwater assassins. The four inch shad size in particular seems to be working really good. Or throw a live mullet at them. And then offshore, mangrove snapper, 65 to 75 feet of water. You want to fish north of buoy 12. The sardines and cigar minnows at night seem to be working pretty good as well, Bree. All right, well, stay. And on the East Coast, let's go north to the Derringer Zone and talk with Captain Tommy Derringer in the Northeast region, your neighbor. Yes, hey, Tommy. He is. <laughs> hey, guys. You know, hey, I wish I was down there with Captain Randy catching some bonefish. Yeah, get but in line. Here, we're, <laughs> we're just, uh, yeah, we're just a little too far north for him up here. But, you know, what we do have is some really good red fishing going on right now in the Strike Zone Northeast region. Now, this weekend, we have a perfect early morning redfish tide for both the flats and the creek fishing. Now, with that last couple hours of outgoing tide, the redfish are going to be feeding on those tons of small finger mullet we have invading the whole entire region. Now, I would toss the smaller topwater skitter walk at first light, and then once the sun comes up and it warms up, you're going to want to switch to either a live or a cut mullet. Now, what you really want to look for is the big concentrations of bait, and that's where those redfish are going to be hanging out. We also have some giant bull reds showing up in both the St. John's River near Mayport and in the St. Augustine Inlet. I spoke to Captain Tony Bazella from TonyBazella.com, and he tells me the bull reds are hanging out in the 30 to 45 foot depths in the St. John's River from the Dames Point Bridge all the way to the Little Jetty. Now, at St. Augustine Inlet, those big reds are hanging out in the same depth, but they're going to be right along the Jetty Rock. The best baits in both the river and in St. Augustine have been cut or live mullet, as well as a halved blue crab. Now, we've been having some huge tides this week, so it's best to fish the top or the bottom of the tide when that current slows down just a little bit. Now, if you do fish for those big reds, just remember to take some time to revive them before you release them. I got a picture here of one of those big guys. This is Josh Pitts with a huge bull red he caught with me at the St. Augustine Inlet. Look at his face. That guy's <laughs> excited, isn't he? Stoked, man. He was face. stoked on that one. The fish didn't so, stand a chance. He's wearing camo. He couldn't even see him. <laughs> good now, one, Jim. No. Go ahead, Tommy. We have some crazy good tarpon fishing happening right now. Now, there are quite a few tarpon both along the beach, in the bait pods, and in the area inlet. 
Now with the early morning low tide we got this weekend, it's going to be a great time to get out at that first light and look for those tarpon. They're stacking up big time on, at all the inlets on the first of the incoming tide, feeding on some monster schools of really big mullets, about 8 to 10 inch mullets. You're just going to look for busting fish and look for the schools of those big mullets along the rocks at both the St. Augustine and at the Mayport Inlet. There have also been quite a few tarpon just outside of Matanzas Inlet on the last of the outgoing tide feeding on schools of little glass minnows. Now the go-to setup for those tarpon are going to be a good sized mullet or a pogey, pre-lined or under a cork or a balloon. I like to use a VMC serpa hook that's going to match the size of the bait somewhere between 7 and about 10 knots. I got one other picture here. This is Steven Liesering with a nice tarpon he caught with me just outside of Matanzas Inlet. Now, moving offshore, guys, the grouper fishing is still really good this week. I spoke to tournament angler Nate Stewart out of Jacksonville, and he tells me he's been catching some really nice scamp groupers. He's fishing in the uh, 140 to 180 foot depth, and he tells me that those grouper are really wanting a lively bait right now. So Nate's been stopping on those nearshore wrecks on his way offshore, and he's loading up big time on those live cigar minnows and sardines. He said the current has been really strong out there, so he's using 12 up to 16 ounces of lead to reach and then hold the bottom. And he tells me the toughest thing right now is getting through all those giant red snapper to get to those grouper. I got a picture here. This is Steve Elliott with a nice scamp grouper he caught right offshore Jacksonville. Now the last thing offshore, you know, I spoke to Captain Billy Hunsicker from EndlessSummerCharters.com and he tells me the bee liners are wide open right now in the 120 to 160 foot depth. He's catching those snapper on live bottom and ledges. He says they've been holding well up current of the structure. That current's really been ripping. And he's been catching them on frozen sardines. And Captain Billy says those fish are spawning right now, so they're big, up in the five pound range, which is a lunker of a vermilion snapper. Ooh, that is a big one, Tommy. Hey, thanks so much. Great report. Lots of photos with that one. And we're going to go take your Northeast region hot spots from here. Tommy says, tarpon all through the area inlets First incoming tide is when you want to be there and look for the schools of big mullet and you want to free line one of those mullet on a 7 to 10 aught VMC circle hook. The 7385 model is one of the best. Offshore, big vermilion snapper in 120 to 160 feet and you want to use some frozen sardines on the up current side of the ledge or live bottom you happen to be fishing on, Brie. Sounds good. Well, coming right up, we have the Costa Conservation Minute tip and then with only one more region to go, the Central West region, of course, right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, Florida Keys Edition. Poppy Joe's yummy. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevrolet, find new roads. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. The IGFA, conservation through education. Get your hands wet. Florida Outdoor Experience. Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply. And there's no stopping Okuma. Introducing Helmmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a paw and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. There's no specials on days like today. Nothing's cheap. Nothing's on the house. You can have your happy hour, but only after you've paid the full price. of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. 
There are two cages in this room. The one on your right is made out of high strength steel and the other is made of aluminum. Now I'm gonna release a 700 pound grizzly bear into the room, so you better pick a cage and get in. Ooh, this is crazy. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Why did you pick the steel cage? Harder for the bear to get in the steel. You wanna see something else made with high strength steel? That's the Chevy Silverado, made with high strength steel for high strength dependability. Beautiful. <laughs> this is highly irregular. Being able to enjoy fishing and boating in Florida is a dream come true. There's not a better place to be. Here are a couple tips to make sure your time on the water is more enjoyable and safer. Pay attention while operating your boat. A distracted boater is the single greatest cause of boating accidents. Make sure you maintain 360 degree awareness, scan constantly to make sure you avoid running into boats, docks, or any other objects. Another way to make sure your time on the water is safer is by developing a life jacket habit. The newer inflatable life jackets are so comfortable you won't feel like you're wearing one. Most importantly, you wanna make sure you return home safely to your friends and family. Don't take a chance, wear a life jacket all the time while boating. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. For more information, log on to myfwc.com. Hashtag life jacket habit. I like that. Go. All right, with our last captain of the show, Captain Jeff Page is ready to give his report from the Central West region. Go ahead, Page. Hey, you guys. Jimmy Ross in the house. Yes, mm -hmm. I am. Good to hear from you, All Jeffrey. All right, right. Good to hear your voice in there. Well, you know, we don't have the bonefish, but I'll tell you guys something. The redfish in our region, in the Startron Central West region, has become the bonefish of our area, and sometimes they're just as spooky. But as we get into late summer and early fall, like we are right now, the bigger schools of reds move in from the Gulf, and it's not uncommon, Jim, as you know, to come across schools of a couple hundred fish cruising over the flats. Some of the areas that have been more productive right now are the flats off Whedon Island in Tampa Bay, south to the Conception Island at Fort DeSoto, along with Widdens Creek area and Gasparilla, and Sa Gasparilla Sound. You're going to want to have a variety of baits on board, ranging from live pilchards and pinfish to cut chunks of ladyfish or pinfish. As far as lures go, tough to beat a quarter ounce weedless gold spoon or a saltwater assassin four inch sea shad in the Houdini or copper penny pattern rigged on a quarter ounce chartreuse jig head. Higher stages of the tide, look for the fish closer to the mangroves or the oyster bars. On the falling or lower tide, they're going to get in the drop-offs and the potholes. I've got a photo tonight of our good friend Curtis Williams of Family Boating Center of Tampa with a nice redfish he caught on my 23 Pathfinder with me last week. Real quickly, speaking of redfish, we had two more CCA star tag fish caught in the Central West region. First, on Friday the 28th, a gentleman caught one. It was tag fish number 20. He was not a CCA member, nor entered in star tournament. So you know the rest of the story. No boat did he win. He has since entered and became a CCA member. Number two, Saturday, August 29th, same body of water, Terracia Bay, three anglers on board. One was entered, but wasn't fishing, was just enjoying the day. Another one caught it and was not entered. So again, wow. no winning fish. Real quick, there's still five boats, motors, and trailers to give away with all kinds of caches and prizes. So you might think you won't win, but I would still say get out and enter for this last weekend. Real quick, Species 2, Snook Bite continues to be strong in our region with a lot of the big fish holding in the passes and in the inlet due to the fresh water we've had out of the Manatee, Peace, and Mayaka River. Live pilchards are working real good, set up in the passes uh, on fish them on the outgoing tide, which is in the morning this week. If not, you want to throw the Rapala Ghost White x wrap in the size 8 or the Violet Moon 5-inch Saltwater Assassin Jerkbait. I've got a photo tonight of Sal and Sal Finichero of SNL Beans out of Homestead, Florida, good friends with the Murphys. Moving offshore, gag grouper with the water turning a little bit better as far as seas subsiding. Got nice gag grouper holding on hard bottom and ledges in 120 to 140 feet of water. Live pinfish have been the best bet. I've got a photo tonight of Captain Reggie Alcorn with a really nice 
true black grouper that he caught while he was out catching gags. Ooh, that's a chunk. Species 2 mangrove snapper. The mangs are holding on wrecks and ledges in 75 to 100 feet of water. Chum the fish with cut pieces of pilchard, then throw a live pilchard out on a light wire 30 circle hook rigged on 20 pound floral. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to our good friends Orlando and Rita of Almorada, Florida. They're in the audience tonight with Captain Rick Murphy. Hey, thanks for that report, Jeff. I tell you what, if you're not entered in the CCA Star Tournament, Good grief. I don't understand why you would even go fishing. Right? The Gosh. chance to win boats and motors. And when, it comes to Every this, week. when it comes to the east side of the state, I'm going to enter for all of you guys. I'm going to just, yeah, here's just the do credit it. card. I'm just getting like 90 entries. And or you something. can have to boat or something, right? <laughs> anyway, well, we're going to go to the sea sucker hotspots for the central <laughs> west region. We're upset. <laughs> I, it's, it's so many people have missed on it. Inshore, redfish. Lots of schools of redfish on the Fort DeSoto and Tarpon Key Flats. Throw corked pilchards or pinfish for best results. And offshore, Permit. There's a bunch of nice permit hanging on the wrecks and reefs in the 7 to 11 mile range. You want to throw free lined pass crabs, or if you can't find anything else, just try to get some of those little frozen crabs that you find once in a while over at the bait store, and they might work as well, but the live ones are always going to work best for you. That'll do, Jim. Well, we're having so much fun with our Florida Keys show, but we have some awesome shows planned for y'all, so stick around to hear what we're getting into next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Oh, that looks like a sunset to me. What do you think? When I first sit in the seat, it makes me think of a BMW. I feel like I'm in a Lexus. You would think that this was a brand new Audi. It's like a luxury car. It feels kind of like an Infiniti. Very similar to Range Rover. This is pretty high tech. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of the Mercedes. This is Chevy? Wow. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for Chevy. They thought about me. I could totally rock this. This thing feels pretty boss. It looks kind of dope. That's pretty cool. This is the jam. Pretty bomb, dude. Maybe I will go Chevy. <laughs> I got my first Yamaha in 1994, and I still use that outboard in the Bahamas today. This Yamaha 130 has over 2,000 hours on it, and it sometimes sits for six months. I can always depend on it starting and performing like it did when it was new. Everybody knows Yamaha stakes their reputation on reliability, and for me, that Yamaha 130 is living proof. So if you're considering a Yamaha, I can tell you that reliability and performance is something that you can count on for a long time. Forward fish are small fish that hold marine food webs together. Put simply, forage fish like pilchards turn sunshine into snook. The IGFA and other conservation organizations are working with the FWC to improve forage fish management in Florida. Ensuring that there's enough food in the water for our game fish will maintain Florida's legacy as the fishing capital of the world. Visit FloridaForagefish.org to learn more and to sign the Forage Fish Pledge. For over 30 years, Guy Harvey has been a true hero to marine life and conservation. And now he's sharing his inspiration with an exclusive image for the Guy Harvey Hero scratch-off game from the Florida Lottery. Win up to $50,000, incredible sport fishing trips, and the opportunity to fish with Guy Harvey himself. Celebrate your everyday heroes and the freedom to play with the Guy Harvey Heroes Scratch-Off Game today. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And make sure to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.chevyfloridainsiderfishingreport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are talking about piers and jetties. Woohoo! Woohoo! Be sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday, plus you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Check your local listings for times. Well, guys and Rick, I never thought I would say this, but we've missed you here in the studio, kind of, right? But I know oh, you've been... Oh, yeah, of course we did. <laughs> I know you've been having fun in the Florida Keys. It's time to say bye. Where? My pants are going to fall down. <laughs> You're, Guys. you're absolutely right, Bree, and we've we've had a great time down here in the Keys. Hammered. Certainly, we missed you. Hammered. I know Andy oh, we a lot more her than a lot. me. But Andy, <laughs> you know we've done some really cool stuff here at the Postcard Inn in the Florida Keys. What do you got here for me? That's a pain in the ass to rent. <laughs> oh, this it is really perfect is. for you perfect. to buy this for me. <laughs> but, but, but you know something, Rick? We've had the opportunity tonight not only to talk about fishing. 
but we talked a little about Florida Keys cuisine with, with the chef from the America Resort. You heard a little bit about the cultural scene from Dick Hago to the Murata Way Arts and Cultural District. Let's give you a nice little flavor of what the Florida Keys are all about. Yeah. And of course, flakeys.com. You're absolutely right. Andy, thank you so much for being here, Randy. We'll see yep. you guys. We're going to toss it back to the Bye, studio. Guys. Take it away, Bree. We've got our drinks, too. Don't worry. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Jim. We'll see you all next week for Piers and Jetties. There we go. Love the Florida Keys. <laughs> Bye.